Dobro večer drugari, dobrodošli na još jedan tutorial Slobode Amazone Balkan. Kao što vidite, večeras imamo još jedno veliko ime kao gosta naravno našeg kanala Slobode Amazone Balkan. Na ime radi se o jednom od najuspješnijih Amazon sellera koji postoji naravno u ovom svijetu biznisa, a također i jednom od najvećih poznavalaca PPC-a. Naš gost je na ime Liran, Liran koji je također i jedan od predavača na svjetskim boznatim seminarima kao što su SellerCon u Las Vegasu i dalje Global Source u Hong Kongu itd. itd. Liran svakako u ovoj današnjoj lekciji priča jednu zanimljivu svakako temu za sve vas koji ste svakako novi u ovom biznisu i želite da razumijete neke naravno benefite i naravno neke nove aplikacije koje Amazon svakodnevno lansira kako biste naravno o samog starta uhvatili ove nove trendove za 2020. godinu. Pa da počnemo. Evening Liran and welcome to my channel. You know how much I appreciate you and your work and also results what you get. I'm really honored to have someone like you with so much experience here to share with us and with my people who are totally beginners to understand better Amazon and the benefits from this business. Today, as we said, we will speak speak more about the new features and everything what people from totally beginners needs to know in advance to have better benefits for the trends 2020 in Amazon. So welcome, uh, welcome to my channel once again and please share uh, many tips and tricks what you have for, uh, for all people. Thank you so much for having me and uh, I will say that um, uh, you know I don't necessarily go on everybody's channel and everybody that asks me because uh, I'll end up just doing this all day without actually getting work done. Um, but you know, we've had this social media relationship yeah. talking about life stuff, um, <laughs> and found that you really want to help people, yeah, um, and have this mission of sharing, sharing this Amazon thing. And I kind of really resonate with that. So, um, I'm super happy to be on your channel and to, um, to be here and to, you know, maybe share with, uh, your followers who maybe, you know, never, never heard of me before, probably in, in Europe and, um, share a little bit of my perspective uh, from selling on Amazon for the last uh, five years. It's really nice to hear that. Thank you very much for that. You know, I'm, I'm in the same goal like you to help people and understand that, 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 how, that there is a, a good chance to change the life, you know, doing just this kind of work online, you know. First yeah. time I hear from you, it was uh, on Global Source Summit from Megla. Mm -hmm. You was presented there. Yes. <laughs> and I will start to follow you and to... to to implement the things that you share online, so it's. Uh, I think that you 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 deserve, of course, to be to, to share a lot of with million people. You know your uh, your your ideas. Thank you, thank you. Um, so with that, um, I'll share my screen. Um, I prepared this uh, presentation just within the last uh, couple of weeks, so it's kind of fresh and new. Um, and since this is the beginning of the year, um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of how to look at Amazon for 2020. Um, what, how to, how to think about an Amazon, how to plan out your vision for your business on Amazon. Um, maybe there are people watching that are already selling successfully on Amazon. There may be people watching that have never sold on Amazon, um, and are interested in looking to sell on Amazon. Um, my business model of selling on Amazon is utilizing FBA, um, and private label. So we'll start within that context of developing, uh, your own products. So you have a presentation for us, yeah? Yes, so I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, and here it is. So we'll talk about success in Amazon in 2020. Um, I have a new company called Zon Marketer, um, and I'll actually also give out my email. Um, I don't do it a lot, but if you have some questions following up on this, um, you can email me uh, liran at zonmarketer.com. Okay, I will put the link down in the description for you. Thank you. And if you go to the website now, it's actually in the process of being built because this is a new new agency I'm starting with a, with a partner. So right now it may not look all pretty, um, but um, you can email me if you have any any questions. Yeah, um, thank you. So let's go to the first slide. So for this presentation, kind of what I want to talk about is uh, developing a product roadmap for 2020. So, you know, a lot of sellers, when they start selling on Amazon, they're, they you know, they, they say, okay, what product should I, should I start with? So I think you should think about that, but you should also think about what is going to be my product roadmap, right? If you think about big companies, 
um, they don't just launch a product randomly. They have a plan. And the first thing I think you need for your business is a plan. I think there are um, kind of three levels of looking at business. And the first one is your vision. Then it goes to the strategy. And then it goes to the actual tactics. And a lot of sellers only focus on the tactics, but they don't necessarily have a vision for their, for their business. And so we're still in January, 2020. You should figure out what is my vision for my business? Where do I want to be December of 2020 in my business? How many products do I want to have launched? Uh, how much revenue do I want to do on a monthly basis? And then from there, you, you need to work backwards to figure out what that stra- strategy is. If you want to have five successful products by December of 2020, well, you probably need to launch 10 products or 15 products because not every product is going to be a home run, even for people that are very successful. Yes. You never know what happens in the market. You never know who's going to come in. You never know how the prices might, might um, change. You don't, you don't know. There are a lot of unknowns. And so not every product you launch will be successful. And, and probably there'll be a mix of some um, home runs, hopefully some, you know, if you're, if you're talking about baseball in the U S maybe this is a bad analogy. <laughs> um, but you know, if you're talking about playing, playing games or playing football, sometimes, you know, you can score five goals in a game and that's a home run. And then sometimes you can only score one goal, right? So you're going to have some products that do like uh, from one to 10 are five or six, and you're going to want to keep them. You're going to have some products that are at eight, nine or 10. That's amazing. And then you're going to have some losers one and two that you want to get rid of. And so, um, what I built out for my 2020 is a vision. Where do I want to be in 2020 in terms of revenue and then in terms of profit and income for my Amazon business? How many products do I need to launch? And then what is the, what is the game plan for that? Um, talk a little bit about ranking and reviews. We'll talk a little bit about the benefits of brand registry and video, Amazon advertising, um, and some systems and, and hiring. And um, feel free to kind of jump in and we can have a discussion along the way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about developing your, oops, developing your product roadmap. Um, So, so the first thing that um, I think you want to ask yourself, and one of the biggest mistakes that I see sellers making is one, they don't look to differentiate products. They basically just, they're just looking at the data and I think Amazon is a game of art and science. It's not just a game of science. And a lot of people want to make it science. Look for a product that has, you know, between 5,000 and 20,000 BS star that has X amount of reviews and this and this and this and this. That's all data. But I think one of the biggest things when you're looking at the products that you're going to launch is, is why would somebody buy from me? Okay, this is a message. If, if you hear me talk... This is something I say throughout all my talks. Answer the question, why would somebody buy from me? If I'm going into a space, this is a, you know, this is super competitive type product, right? But this is an external battery charger. The, the actual, the reason why I buy, I buy this product specifically is because I can plug it in um, and it has the Android and the micro charger and the iPhone charger and has some, has some differentiate, differentiation to this product that, that, other products on the market may not have. Now this already exists. So if you're going to go and you're going to want to launch a product like this, and this product already has a thousand reviews on Amazon and is on the first page, and you launch a similar product, why would somebody buy that from you? The the worst answer that you don't want to have is just because you have a better price. Because because how easy is it for these guys to go and lower their price for a month just to crush you? out of the competition. They don't care. They have a thousand reviews. They crush you out and then they raise their price and they continue. And so you need to, you need to have some creativity and some, some art to the science also. So, you know, understanding all the data is great. You really need to understand that. But then you also need to answer questions on how can I improve a product? How can I look at all the reviews? Now, the good, the good news is that a lot of that data lies on Amazon. A lot of that data also lies off of Amazon. What do I mean by that? Well, you can go in and, and read all your competitors' reviews. You can read the good things. You can read the bad things. Start making notes, 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 notes. And then think about, how can I offer more value with this product? How can I, do I need to change the design? Can I change the materials? Can I make it better? Can I add functionality? All these things, when you want to be at the highest levels, that means, you know, being able to come out with something that maybe you can patent. Now, I don't think you need to start with a patent on Amazon to have success. That, 
that's going to get into being something that's more expensive. But don't start. The biggest mistake, another big mistake I see people making is they start out with saying, I'll just launch this product just to get my feet wet. And then once I see some success, then I'll go and create something or make it better. The problem is when you launch that, you're doomed to fail if you don't come out and differentiate. The only caveat to all that is that the only caveat to all that is if you really launch something that has very, very little competition and you get in early on the trend, sometimes you might be lucky enough where you don't need to make any changes and you can ride the trend, ride the wave because you got in early. If you launched a massage gun two years ago or even 18, 12 to 18 months ago, maybe it was possible that you would not need to differentiate at all because you got in as one of the, the first ones. But it's not always easy to find those markets. And so um, being able to come in, differentiate a product, I think is very important. What are some of the other things that I look at? Well, I want to make sure that there is keyword demand, right? Meaning there's search volume around the keywords. So not just for one keyword, but multiple keywords. What does that mean? I like to see multiple keywords that have over 5,000 searches a month in my niche. Ideally, there's two or three that have over 10,000 searches a month because now you're getting into enough volume where there's enough people looking for the product where there's hopefully room for you to come in. At the same time, I don't want the niche to be super, super competitive, especially if I'm a beginning seller. I'd rather launch 10 products that can do 3,000 to 5,000 a month in sales than launch, you know, than try to launch uh, one or two products that can do 100,000 a month. You're going into a very competitive area with people that have a lot of money to throw, throw, throw at products until they knock you out. So look for things that are not as highly competitive, but still have some keyword demand. Yeah, that's good. Um, um, and then when can, where can you improve? Can you differentiate the product? Can you improve the packaging? Can you improve the product? These are all questions that you need to ask yourself. Amazon is a real business, just like any other businesses. That's most right. businesses, Most businesses fail in the first five years. So the reality is most Amazon sellers also fail. Now, the reason why Amazon sellers have had a bigger success is because we are riding the wave of e-commerce, right? E-commerce today is only 5% of total sales in the world. Um, that are mostly in retail stores. Um, and you, that's going to double over the next, I don't know, five five to 10 years. And then Amazon is also growing. Amazon is where 50% of all people start their searches for e-commerce. So we're in, this, we're in this golden period of a transfer of wealth from brick and mortar to e-commerce. And so that merger is a great time to be, to be in it. Um, and if you do it right, you can have massive success, but you got to do it right just like any other business requires capital, requires thinking, requires the right strategy. Yeah, I'm also, um, a lot of people ask me like, uh, is there any place uh, to jump in in Amazon business? I said, uh, there is, you see, Amazon is developing a lot of other different markets. So if the American market is too, uh, it's too competitive, then you can uh, just learn the, how it works and, uh, you know, and then you jump in, in uh, I don't know, in Italy, in Germany, in Japan, in uh, India, now you start in Israel, as I, as I heard. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, the European market is, is strong and good. Um, the, the two biggest markets outside of the U S are Japan and Germany. Um, and UK is also a very good market. So you could, you could definitely launch, launch in Europe. It's going to be less, less competitive and, and Amazon is growing very much in Europe. Um, and for probably, Japan is a problem for keywords. As I, as I, as I know, there is not, there is no tool to, to pull the data for, uh, yeah, for relative keywords and everything. So what does that mean? That means that there's not as many people looking at the data. So if you could try to say, hey, these products are selling really well in these markets. Do they sell well in Japan? Do people in Japan like these products? What does the review count? What do things look like? Then maybe that's an area that you can actually exploit because people are saying, hey, there's no tools. There's no this. There's no that. So um, there, is a, there is a chance for us for what we talked about before, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would challenge you to say, what are the 10 products that you're going to launch this year that could do 5,000 to 25,000 a month? And that's how you build this business. Some will win, some will lose and creating, creating a, a vision, uh, a vision for that. Um, some ways for you to be able to get reviews and ranking when you're launching products. Well, number one, um, I'm going to skip a little bit. There's, there's a program in the U S, um, called, um, IP accelerator program. And it's the new IP, one. No? Yes. It's a new program. 
And the reason why I bring it up is because brand, because it allows you to have brand registry um, super fast. Okay. You can get brand registry in like five to 10 days. And the reason is basically Amazon requires you to have a registered trademark before they give you brand registry. Brand registry equals a lot of marketing uh, opportunities that you don't have without it. Well, in order to get a trademark, it takes you know seven to nine months in the US. The benefit of the IP accelerator program is, um, and you can just Google Amazon IP accelerator program, is if you use one of Amazon's recommended lawyers for your trademark and they accept that trademark to file, Amazon will, you'll still take you seven to nine months to get the trademark, but Amazon will give you that brand registry. That's great. So if we go back... So you can, you can have all the uh, privilege like uh, brand registered people, even if you still don't have a trademark, right? Correct. Through this program. Yeah. Um, and so what are the benefits of, of having it is one, we've seen now the Vine program roll, roll out. Um, I've uh, enrolled one of my products in the Vine program. So Amazon is giving you now five products you can enroll for free. Um, I'm sure sometime this year, that's going to go to a paid model, probably a thousand dollars per product. Uh, this was um, this was historically only available in vendor program um, and at a cost, but now Amazon is bringing it to Seller Central, the third party sellers. Tremendous opportunity to get reviews. Vine program is basically vetted reviewers that Amazon has that will get your product for free. Um, it's you're eligible to enroll um, if you have it in your Seller Central, your brand registered. And if you have less than 30 reviews on your product, you can enroll your product. You're essentially giving away 30 units of your product that Vine reviewers can sort of grab in the program and then write a review. If you have a good product, I've so far gotten maybe, I enrolled December 22nd, the first product in this program, and I've gotten maybe around eight or nine reviews so far. Um, all the, One was four stars and the rest was five stars and very, very detailed, really well-written reviews. There's pros and cons. If you have a bad product, if you haven't done your inspections, if you haven't really vetted the quality, they're going to be critical. Um, but if you have a very good product, a very good quality product, it's a great way to get reviews. Um, you can use the early reviewer program. Um, you want to have some kind of, um, I misspelled this, but post-purchase review funnel. So you want to use an insert in your packaging to drive someone either to some kind of landing page. You could use a QR code. You could drive them to a many chat sequence and give them some incentive to go give you their information, okay? So, um, for example, I have a product that's $200. Um, my incentive is go, uh, go to this link and double your warranty from one year to two years. Um, and then they fill out all their information, their name, their email, especially for warranties. People are, are used to giving you all their information to register. Um, so we send them to a landing page off the insert, we collect their information and then we email them and ask them for a review. We're not incentivizing them. It's not black hat and it's a totally legitimate way to get more, uh, more reviews on the, on the product. Um, if you don't have a $200 product, if you're selling a $10 product or a $15 product, well, you can offer somebody a free gift. Um, so you send them something that maybe costs you, um, you know, a dollar to source and, you know, a couple bucks to ship in the U S like first class, and it might cost you three or four bucks to get that email. So they fill in all their information. You send them a free gift. You then follow up again via email. Now you have their email outside of Amazon. You're also building your launch list for a future launch within that same niche. Cause now you have an email list that you're build that you're building out and you don't necessarily need to give people who already like have bought from you before. They've given you their email. They have a relationship with you. You don't need to give them a hundred percent rebate anymore when you launch your product to them. You can give them a twenty-five percent off coupon and or a thirty percent off coupon, um, and you might be able to get them to buy and follow up for reviews for your next product. Yeah, Amazon is also don't like hundred uh, percent rebate or something. They are, it, it's it's how also they check is it uh, fake or not. They're following that. The rebates uh, they don't want they yes. 70 percent people use but i suggest always like 20 to, to 40 percent maximum to not go not do yes, too so, much. so there's two kind of points here there's coupons and there's rebates yeah on the rebate side um i wouldn't necessarily uh give everybody 100 percent rebate because these are customers that are generally taking these rebates from a lot of other people and so they have a low quality score as a customer yeah that, that's not the new yeah Amazon recognizes that you and I, or I buy on average um, 10, 10 times a month from Amazon or seven times a month from Amazon. 
And these people are buying on average 50 times a month on Amazon because they're getting 100% rebates. And so they know it's not real. Um, and they're writing a lot of reviews. Yeah. Yeah, that is also that also affects your ranking. As I, if if the low quality buyer often buy your products, you will you will lose a ranking. Yeah. Yeah. So so um, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, I, I think definitely in, um, that has an effect on reviews. Uh, but I think Amazon is working on exactly what you're saying yeah. to to give more weight to the customer that's buying your product. They're probably doing like a red flag for the buyers, like they do red flag for the sellers, you know? So they need yeah. to, like, to, to implement this in the algorithm to check uh, fake yeah. reviews and fake uh, buys. Yes. Uh, this is why your best bet to get reviews are through legitimate means. Vine program, earlier viewer program, people who bought your product regularly as customers and you follow up with some kind of free gift, warranty, something, and get their information, follow up for review. You're not incentivizing them. Um, there's the Amazon review button. So there's on the orders. Um, now there's a little bit, there's a little button that says request review in your orders. You want to have uh, a VA go in and do that. There's also some Chrome extensions out there free that mm -hmm. will automate that process. Um, and then um, also some additional programs that are out there. Um, this one is actually officially closed. Um, I spoke to somebody from the SaaS core team today. Um, I got one of my brands in there and they have room for about 50 or 60 more brands. Um, but they're looking for brands that have capital that really want to grow. Um, this SaaS core program, you can Google it. Amazon SaaS core is a program where you have a rep. Um, you pay for that rep, um, but you get a lot of additional benefits. So for example, you don't pay for any seven day deals. Um, seven day deals cost $300 and you'll see in your seller central account, not every one of your products is even eligible. Through this program, you can run seven day deals. What that means is one, you get them free. They're typically $300. Um, and number two, you'll have this limited time budget badge on your listing. Now you take that and you combine that with running top of search placements in your advertising. And it's a great way to rank and get more sales, which will lead to more reviews. Um, so when you run top of search placement, you can run that with advertising. You're going to pay more to show up in top of search. But imagine if you show up there and you have this limited time deal on your listing, you're now, you're now getting in position number one with a deal for people. And you can drive a lot more sales, drive reviews and ranking through the keywords that you're advertising on. Um, so these are some really good sort of white hat things um, that you can follow for 2020. Part of the way to get some of this stuff is through having brand registry. And so that's why I really like the IP accelerator program because it can accelerate you getting, uh, you getting that trademark. Yeah. Before it was yeah. too, too, yeah. too long. You need to wait seven, eight months to get a trademark and then to have the benefits from Pedro almost one year. That's yep. incredible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the, the problem for some people right now is they already applied for the trademark. So if you already applied for the trademark and you're three or four months in, you can't really do anything. You just need to wait <laughs> not the, the rest of the time. But if you haven't applied yet, um, it's a great opportunity to go through that program. It's not very expensive. Um, I think I saw one of the lawyers there. Somebody told me it was like $1,100 um, for the process. So you might pay regularly for a trademark, five or 600 bucks if you sign up for a service like LegalZoom or Trademark 411 or something like that. Um, so you're going to pay a little bit more to work with a lawyer, but it's not outrageous. Um, and I think the benefits for your business are going to be well worth it. Yeah, for course. Um, of course. So let's talk about what else becomes important. Um, brand registry, um, really important in video. So one of the benefits of brand registry is you're able to have video on your listing. Um, there's other benefits. So you'll see here in my slide, I say video becomes very, 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 very important in 2020. And the reason is if you search on Amazon on the mobile app um, for keywords, you'll see that on the first page, on the bottom of the first page is a video ad. Those video ads right now are performing really, really, really well. And the reason is because most people don't have access to video ads in beta. It's a beta program. Um, our advertising clients were able to get them whitelisted with Amazon. Um, and some of you may already have it if you have, if you have brand registry, but this will roll out to everybody. What does that mean? Does that mean you should sit back and do nothing? No, it means you should have these video clips ready to go so that when you have it in your seller central account, when you have access to it, you can have it ahead of your competitors. Um, and these video ads are performing well because 
there isn't as much competition on the bids for the clicks. So you're able to get clicks, you know, if, uh, if a major keyword that is very competitive is costing three or $4 for a click, um, on these video ads, you might pay 90 cents. Um, and you show up on first one of mobile, which That's is, great. which is really good. Um, so for these videos, um, you need a, uh, less than 45 second clip. Um, I suggest to do a few things on these videos. We've tested this on video. Um, and what I suggest you do is one, you want to have text on the video because the sound is off by default. So just like you see ads uh, on Facebook where there's text on the video because the sound is muted by default, you want to have that. Um, and also think about how you can tie a video to a keyword. Okay. So for example, if I have a garlic press and somebody's just searching for a garlic press, I might show the garlic press. I might show somebody using it. On top of that, maybe sturdy garlic press or strong garlic press is another keyword that has volume that people are searching for. Well, maybe for that video, I create a video that shows me taking a hammer to that garlic press and banging it, right? Because somebody's searching, I'm marrying the video to the keyword. And if you go above and beyond that, you can really take any video that you have and use a software program to add some text on it. So for example, if the keyword is um, professional garlic press, maybe on the first thing on the video, you have the words looking for professional garlic press, and you're marrying the keyword to the video, and you could do it very cheaply just with some software putting text on the video and having the same exact video, but just um, targeting the words. And what we've seen testing this is that the conversion rates are about the same, but the click through rates are actually higher when we have that language of marrying the, um, marrying the text to the, to the keyword. And all we added was looking for a professional garlic press, looking for a sturdy garlic press, and it, it ties in exactly to what the person is looking for with the video app. Uh, um, Liran, I wanted to ask you if it's correct or not, because I was I am also in this uh, CEO world from 10 years before. I remember that uh, if we say, example, for the pictures, the same is for the video. If you upload a file with the same keyword you want to target, so like uh, uh, garlicpress.mp4, that can also help you to to rank uh, for this, uh, like like a keyword. Is it correct now, okay, now for okay. Amazon? Um, I don't know. I've heard the same thing, but I've never seen proof um, mm -hmm. that that this is a thing. Um, I've seen in brand registry and A-plus content where you give uh, alt text and it's worth putting keywords there because Amazon asks you for it. But I haven't seen that there's a direct correlation between the file name and the, and the keyword. Like I haven't seen proof. I've heard mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah, because um, so I, I, I had this from before when I had my blogs and other website for hotels yes. before 2006, seven. that helps me to, to, to rank my uh, page on the Google on the, on the top, top, top 10, the first one. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't think it's, even if it is, I don't think it's that powerful. Yeah. Now uh, for Amazon is different, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So what are some other things you should focus on? Well, Amazon Live, I think it's going to grow this year also. Um, so Amazon Live, if you haven't checked it out, go to amazon.com slash live. You can actually, there's an Amazon Live app. You can actually take your cell phone, show you working with the product, show off the product. And this is a live, it's a live stream. You add your product, your product will show add to cart under there. You can even add a coupon to it. Um, and I think Amazon Live is going to be another thing. I don't think you need a super high-end professional studio. I think it could just be, if you have a kitchen product, it could just be you using the product in the kitchen and showing how it's used. That, that can b gives you a credibility for your product that it's not fake. It's not like, a, let's say, let's use a yeah. word, a Chinese or something, you know? Yeah, and, and it shows you as, hey, hey, I'm Liran. I yeah. created this charger because I wanted to create the best charger on the market. Let me show you throwing it on the floor and not breaking. Of course. Whatever, right? Like showing authentic, showing who the owner is. Um, you can hire actors. There's studios that do this and stuff, but even without that level of budget or, or something to it, I think it's uh, Amazon Live is worth exploring. Um, obviously, A-plus content, uh, I think super important. And um, more. there's more things there that you can use to cross-sell your other product. You can have a comparison guide that shows your other products. And to cross-sell your other brand products from that one product that maybe is getting the most traffic. Um, IP accelerator program we spoke about and video ads. So all these, I think, are really important for... 2020. Um, so video ads, uh, I call are a blue ocean. Um, you know, the, 
the sharks are swimming in the in the other ocean, but video ads is not yet where the sharks are. So I think great opportunity to be able to run those. Um, sponsored display is something that's in advertising um, in Seller Central. I don't think it's great now. Uh, we've run tests. We haven't seen great results. Sponsored display is the ability to retarget customers off of Amazon. Um, haven't seen great results for that in Seller Central. There is another different, totally different platform called the Amazon Demand Side Platform, that's DSP. Um, through Amazon Directly, it's a $35,000 um, contract. Um, we can run it for you at a $5,000 a month minimum. We have seen good results with that program. That is a totally different platform um, that we have access to. But sponsored display in Seller Central, just something to keep your eye on. Amazon is rolling out more features. So keep your eye on it, test it. But so far, we haven't seen great results. Um, creating a storefront and running ads to a storefront um, and product listing pages. So far with sponsored brand ads, these are the headline ads on top. We've seen better performance in product listing page than, than storefront. But again, you should have a storefront. When people click your brand name, if you have brand registry, they'll go to your storefront. If you have a really nice looking storefront, that adds more, more credibility uh, to what you're doing. Um, and then again, use using advertising to rank your product. So for example, running an aggressive price with top of search or running a seven day deal with top of search and getting sales through uh, advertising that can help your organic uh, visibility. Um, and then the last thing, um, scaling in 2020, um, I think you should build your business with the exit in mind. I think, you know, you make 50% of your money along the way while you're doing the business and you make your other big chunk of money when you sell the business. And you want to think about your, your business with the exit in mind, with the end in mind. Um, and so how are you going to, um, how are you going to hand a business to somebody else that already has standard operating procedures? Here's how we do everything. Here's how we document. If you do it from the beginning, early on, you can literally have multiple people wanting to buy your business. If your business does a million dollars a year in sales and somebody else does a million dollars a year in sales, has the same amount of profits, you're going to have more people bidding and wanting to buy your business at a higher multiple when you can literally hand off the business with, here's the book of, here's the, here's the playbook of running the business. So standard operating procedures, having the right system, um, having VAs, uh, you know, work for you. I've used free up before for, for VAs. Um, and that's, um, that's been very good and, and hiring and having people in place. Um, and again, if you're able to hand that off to another business owner, that's going to put you in a much better position. Um, my strong point is not systems. So in my business, I have a business partner that's much better in systems. I'm more the creative, the product selection, the advertising, th those things. So um, I think you want to have somebody on your team. If you don't have a business partner, then you want to hire someone. If you're not great at systems to build out the systems for you, because, and even in my own advertising agency, um, uh, on our, on our advertising agency, I'm more the vision and the strategy for what we're going to give to clients. And then I tell my team leader, like, here's exactly what I want to do. Here's what I want to do for every single client go create the systems so that all our guys can do it because that is not my strong point. So I think recognizing what your strength is in terms of your skill set, what you love to do in your, in your business, and then making sure you have other people in place to complement your, your abilities. I think all of us have, you know, a certain superpower, um, you know, that, that we have. And so I think focus on your superpower and then make sure that you have other people either as partners or just on your team that can complement uh, what your superpowers are. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's, it's really important to have a, a, a team when you grow your business so, so much like you, you need to have a people to, to make it uh, to live longer. Huh? Yes. See, but there is a ton, tons of people. I always say you can hire someone from Philippines. There is a ton of VAs who can help you to yeah, yep. have experience. Yeah. So yes, you can focus yep. on some other things, you know, because I cannot focus everything like uh, product research, marketing, uh, PPC and everything. Uh, you get crazy because of the numbers and uh, yes. for sure, if you have a tons of the products, you know, you cannot focus on everything. You need to hire people and even for a less money, you can uh, have a good uh, VA. Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have, uh, I have an executive type of like admin assistant in the Philippines and yep. um in the U.S., I would probably have to pay $40 an hour for what I pay her. Um, I pay her about 
$8 an hour through free up. And that's kind of like a pretty good amount for Philippines. So she gets paid, you know, pretty well. Um, but she's amazing and I can rely on her. Um, and she frees up my time. And, and they, they the most, speak fluent English. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, the most important resource you have in your life is not actually money. It's your time. Yeah. Because, uh, and that's why people say, I'm wasting my time. I'm going to spend my time, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about time just like it's money. Um, you cannot, you cannot bring it back. You know, you, What's that? You cannot bring it back, yeah? You for cannot me, bring it back. Yeah, money me, comes and goes, but your time, you'll never get back. Yes, yes. Um, for me, like uh, you live your life on credits, you know, every year you spend, it's like uh, giving a credit to the life, you know? So yes. when you go, when you come to 40 something, then you are, uh, yeah, you need to take care. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so I hope that was uh, uh, helpful. Um, my email, Liran, it's on Marketer. If you want to, uh, if you have any questions on this uh, or interested in our Amazon ad agency, um, you can uh, feel free to reach out. Yeah, we will. We, you will make some discount for my people. Of course. Um, yeah, you know what I'll do for you. Um, if you um, if you uh, are interested um, and it makes sense, we'll we'll talk for you to be an advertising client. Um, I will give you myself like a 30 minute consultation call. Um, typically it's either my team leader or one of my account managers. Um, but I will, um, personally give you, um, a call. One of the things I'll tell you that, um, the reason why I don't do discounts is because then some people come to me and say, yeah, I heard I can get a discount here and there and I have problems. Um, so rather than do that, um, I will give you, uh, I'll give you a personal, a personal consultation, um, with me and looking at your seller central account and giving you advice and the best way to kind of move forward for 2020. Thank you. That's, that will be great. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, thank you for, for, for your time and for your uh, yeah, advices for, for everything. Uh, if we stay in touch, you, we will chat yes. more on the social media. <laughs> yes. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.